Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Palmy and in today's video we'll be looking at how we can create our own Irish shaders in Da Studio. So let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in Da Studio and today we're going to make our own Irish shaders and we're going to specifically make a glass shader that you can reuse again and again on any item you wish to do so. And the first thing I'm going to explain to you is the settings that I've got here. So I've just made the background black by going to environment and setting the background to black. So it's easy to show you the glass, what it looks like without all the extra lights and all the dome and everything in the in the background. So that's what I've done there. And my render settings are the basic, the default render settings. So dome and scene, uh, infinite, uh, infinite sphere, the environment map is the default one. So nothing's changed there. So everything is normal as you would expect when you load up their studio. So what I'm going to do first is add a prop. So I'm going to go to my smart content. I'm going to go to my props. I'm going to go to containers and I'm going to pick this uh, basket here. So when we go to our surfaces for this basket, when I click here and click on my basket, go to editor, you'll see that it's not an IRA shader. It is the old shader 3D light. So what we need to do is first convert it. So we go to uh, presets here. We go to shaders and IRA Uber base. I double click that. And when I go back to my editor, you'll see our usual IRA Uber um, shader here. So the first thing we need to do is to turn it into glass is we need to make sure that the glossy layered weight is set to one, which it is. And obviously glass is very glossy. Therefore the layer weight always needs to be one. The glossy color needs to be white because the glossy color is white of glass. The reflection that you get off glass is going to be white. You can, you can change this if you want to say if you had a uh, different color glass, we could change the actual glossiness of the color. But generally when you're having glass, it's normally white. So we need to go down here and the one we want to find is refraction weight. Now refraction weight is very simple. If it's set to zero, it's not glass. If it's set to one, it's glass. There's no in between values because it doesn't make sense. It's either glass or it isn't. So we set that all the way to one. And we've got to uh, go back. Now what's happened here is that the glossy roughness is set to one. Therefore, we've got this kind of frosted glass effect. So what we need to do is just turn that all the way down and then there's our glass. So there we go. We've turned something that looks like a clay uh, basket to a uh, glass uh, glass basket now. Okay. So there's our glass. We've just created our glass shader. Nothing fancy, quite straightforward, nothing too difficult. And the next thing we're going to look at here is the refraction index. Now refraction index, you could change the kind of refraction of the index you want. So in terms of what type of glass material you want. So we can look up these values. If we go to the internet and you just type in glass IOR value, which means index of refraction value. And if you go down here, the one that is pretty good is this one here, I think. This one here explains all the different values. So you got all the different values. Clear plastic has a 1.4. Glass has a index re refraction value of 1.4 all the way to 1.9. And you can have different values of glass. So what I'm going to do is change to heavy glass 1.65. So let's try that. So I'm going to just go back to the studio. I'm going to change my refraction index to 1.65, 1.65. There we go. Not much difference really, but now the studio will treat this as a heavy glass object material. So what else can we do? So what else we can do is add these abe. We can abe. So abe is, if I just turn this up, you'll see a bit of difference. A base when some material uh, glass when you light shines through it, it kind of gives you like this rainbow effect. That's what a base. So it really depends on the material and the density of the material and how much a you need to put on there to get this kind of rainbow kind of effect on the glass. So what also what also we can do is add a base bump. Now base bump map uh, will add like some definition to the actual material. At the moment it's like smooth. So some glass you've got in your home, in your cupboards has this like really nice um, indentations on it. You can feel it with your fingers or you can uh, see it on the glass. So what we can do for that is we can download some. So if you just go to the internet, Google, and if I just typed in uh, glass bump map, Ooh, can't spell bump, bump, bump map. And for bump maps, what you want are these black and white ones here. So any of these would be fine. I've already saved some of these, so I'm going to just go quickly to Dash Studio and add them. So I'll go back to Dash Studio. I'm going to click on my arrow here. I'm going to go to Browse. I'm going to choose the first one, bump one here. And there you go. You can see the bump here that's been added to give a bit of definition of it's a glass. Okay, we've also got an abbey as well a bit. You can start seeing it now here, this color here. 
if I actually turn this off, you can see it better. There we go. So you can see the array, the chromatic array here. So you can see the kind of rainbow effect. Obviously, when you render it properly with some really, really good lighting, it will look brilliant. So what else we can do? So I'm going to just turn the array off for now. So what else we can do is actually have um, change the color of our refraction. So we can make this a different color of glass. So if I go back up here, where it says share glossy inputs, we're going to set that to off. And when we set that to off, we get extra options. We get the refraction color and we get refraction roughness. So what I can change the color of the refraction color to anything I want. So if I wanted to say purple, pink, and that's going to change the color of a glass. Straightforward. You can change it to whatever color you like, green, whatever you want. So I'm going to go back to pink. So there you go. There's our color, we change the refraction color. Now what we can also do is change the refraction roughness. So when I change this, we'll get more frosted glass. So when I go to higher, see how the glass is, is frosted because what's happened, what the refraction roughness does is it smoothens the kind of the glossiness and therefore it makes it look like frosted glass. So there's our frosted glass and we can still see a bit of our, here's our glossiness here, our white glossiness. There we go. So what else can we do? So if you go down here, we got here this option thin walled and we can set that to off. So if I click on that and set it to off. So what we can do, we can also add an additional color, transmitted color. So now I can have two colors as well as the glossiness color for this glass material. So if I click on the transmitted color and I say I've chosen like blue, just gotta click on white first, then go to blue, click OK, and there you go. So what's happened here is that the transmitted color is overpowering the refraction color. And the reason for this is because the transmitted, the transmitted measurement distance is very, very small is that it's overpowering the actual refraction, uh, refraction color. So what we need to do is increase this. Now, obviously you may need to increase this depending on the, the mesh kind of the density of the mesh. Um, you'll have to increase it pretty high. So what I'm going to do is start with something like five and see how that looks. So, okay, we need to do a bit more. We can see a bit more coming in here. So let's try something like 10 and probably a bit more. Let's try something like 20. Let's go a bit crazy. So there we go. So 20 in this case. So obviously it depends on the material you're using, the mesh, how dense it is, the way it's done, uh, the way the geometry is of the mesh. So that's, so now we've got our two colors here. So we've got our refraction color, which is pink. I've got my transmitted color, which is blue. And I've got my glossiness here, which is white here as well, my glossy color. So what also we can do is we can do this really, really cool other effects. So what we can do is with the SSS amount, when I set this to one, we get this really strange uh, cup effect that you've probably seen. Um, this kind of opaque, kind of milky glass colored, kind of glossy look to it. So obviously you lose the transmitted color because the SSS amount is really high. And you get this really, really strange uh, kind of material with SSS. So you can always play around with the SSS amount to get these like really, really cool variations just experiment with the SSS amount, the different designs you can get using the SSS amount. Okay, so I've shown you how to change the color of the glass, how you can have two colors, how you can change the bump map to give you a bit more detail, and how we can have this really, really cool effect with the SSS amount. What we're gonna do now is how do we create liquids? So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually uh, turn all this off so we can get a better idea of what it looks like. So I'm gonna just turn that back to black. Transmission measurement distance won't work now. I'm going to turn thin wall back on. And the refraction color, I'm going to turn back to white. And the roughness, I'm going to turn back as well off. I'll leave the bump map on because that gives a really cool effect. And to create the kind of like liquid effect, what I did was just create a cylinder. So I went to create new primitive, a cylinder, Y positive. Uh, the length is probably too big. So don't worry about these. Um, here, 50 segments, 50 size. You don't really need that much. And then all I did was resize it and then fit it into this object, which is what I've done here. Okay. So I'm going to click on my cylinder here, which is actually my water. I'm going to go to my surfaces editor, click here. And now the refraction index of water is 1.33, which I've already done here. The refraction weight is always going to be one because either it's water or it isn't. And uh, because it's water, it'll be one. And I've already done the uh, glossy here. So what we can do, we can do the uh, refraction color here. So again, we could change that to orange. 
and there we go there's my refraction color orange and now it's got an orangey look to my to my water there okay I can do the roughness as well so if I do the roughness up it will get a bit more cloudier because it's getting more rougher so generally we want to really use that so I'm gonna put that down you can also have a base bump for the water so same thing you go to the internet you type in here water bump map and you would download one of these, any one of these, anything that's free, and you can use them as well. Remember, this is for the normal map, and that's the bottom map. One thing I need to explain is when we go back here into Dash Studio, you either have a base bump or you have a normal map. Now, a normal map is better than a base bump because that's more like the modern type of bump maps, but you wouldn't have both because that wouldn't make sense. You would have either or, or. So you either have a bump map or a normal map. So in this case, I've got a base bump here, and that's why that gives this kind of... Um, these kind of details in the water in the water make it look like make you think like it's water so let's go down what else can we do so again i could turn the thin wall off and now it gets more because the thin wall is off you get more uh, liquidy looks a bit more liquidy and what we could do now is change the sss amount so if i change the sss amount to 0 0.005 you see it gets more orangey very, very deep orange color here and starts to look uh, very, very orangish. Now we can obviously change that. It's probably a bit too high. So probably something like here. There we go. So you can always change the refraction color and get the different viscosity. So there we go. That's the, the SSS amount set to 0 0.05. What we could also do is change the scattering measurement distance. So we can put a value of 10 and see what happens. And there you go. So what's happening here, the scattering measurement distance is a lot more bigger. And so when it hits the SSS amount, it gets a lot more clearer, the liquid. So you can play with the different values of the SSS amount. So we can say, we can go for 0 0.5 and see what happens there. And you can see that it changes. So I can go back to my refraction color and I can change it. To something green if I wanted it maybe that's too green that's probably a bit too green and there we go so that's how we would kind of do our liquid so again if you turn the refraction index up, uh, refraction roughness up you would get more cloudy liquid so there's our cloudy liquid and if I change that to say yellow our yellowy orangey color there you go So there's loads of cool things you could do um, with this array shader. Glass is the easiest object to kind of create, which is why we went with it first. And you can get an idea of all the different settings you can play around with. Of course, you could have the transmitted color if you wanted to. So again, we could change the transmitted color to something else. Let's say we had a bit of blue in there and it's going to overtake that color. So what we need to do is turn the transmitted measurement distance up. So maybe 10. And then you can have like a mixture of color. So it would kind of balance out the refraction color. And then it would use a bit of the transmitted color as well. And you can get a, a unique combination of colors of liquid that you want. So that's great and everything. So how do we save it? That's what you probably want to know. So to save this, so you can use it again and again on any item you wish to do so on any prop, you would first of all, highlight the item that you want to in the scene tab, highlight the item. Then highlight the editor, go to surfaces, editor, highlight this actual shader. You would go to file, save as, shader preset. And then I'm just going to save over this glass shader and then press save. Yes, I want to save over it. And then uh, just make sure that's selected, which it is, and then click accept. And then it saved it. So to double check to make sure it works, I'm going to just delete this basket here I'm gonna go back to my props and go back to my containers and I load that basket up again I'm gonna click on my basket click on the actual shader here and then what you do is in your saved files you click here smart content save files if I go to my preset you'll see shader and I've got two here so this is the obey glass that I did earlier so if I double click that there's my obey glass settings really really cool and then here is the glass shader one that we just did in tutorial. Double click that. And there we go. And that would be the same for the cylinders. So for the water, say if you were 
um, happy with the water. So if you like that kind of water and you want to save it, you do the same thing. So I'll click on cylinder here. I'll click on the actual shader here. I'll go to file, save as shader preset, and I'll just call it uh, liquid. And then click accept. So it saved that. And uh, just to show you that it's been saved, if I click on my basket now, click on the shader here for my basket. I'm going to go to my saved files in my smart content. I'm going to open that up, the preset shader, and there's my liquid, and I'll double click that. And then there's my settings applied to that particular material. Obviously, it won't look like liquid because the settings are different and the liquid was uh, different as well. Uh, the, the actual mesh was different of the liquids because it was just a primitive. So don't expect this to look like a liquid, but there you go. Very, very cool. And you now you know how to use create your IRA shader. Have a play with that and see what you can do. So now we know how to create our own glass IRA shaders and how we can save them and reuse them again and again in Dash Studio. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in next week's video.